Hi, everyone. I'm Sid Sharice. And I'm David Bosher. And you're listening to Destroy the Hairdresser, where we teach you to salon differently. If you are still using a front desk in your salon, it may be time to future-proof your business with Aura Salonware. Aura allows you and your team to check clients out from any device. That means there's no need for a front desk or front desk overhead. What's even more amazing is that clients can check themselves out using the Aura app from their own device. With Aura Salonware, you can finally let technology streamline your business. Start removing your front desk today by visiting aurasalonware.com slash DTH to receive special discounts and promos. Give your clients great hair with fewer products and make more money with less inventory. Introducing Hair Story, a mindful and innovative brand. Hair Story's game-changing product, new wash, cleans and conditions without harsh foams or detergents, restoring your scalp's natural balance. Made with gentle, biodegradable ingredients and recyclable packaging, it's good for your hair and the planet. With Hair Story Pro, earn a 25% commission on client purchases either in person or online. Plus, enjoy free education, wholesale prices, and special client discounts. Try new wash for free and get pro access today at hairstory.com slash DTH. Okay, so before we get started, I want to remind everyone, we do have Hairdresser Hotline open. You can text, you can call, you can leave a voicemail. No one's going to answer. It's just there to collect your questions, your rants and your raves. And the number is 201 564 five zero zero seven and i want you to text that number and i want you to call that number pause this podcast right now and just shoot us a text and say whatever you want to say we will accept all of it and we'll answer questions and we'll share stories anonymously here on the podcast so today we actually have um a text (laughs) that is really simple and it just says read it why eat my strawberries (laughs) <laughs> it just says, um, well, I'm pulling it up. It just says, uh, I hate my boss, but I don't want to quit my job. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have ever been personally <laughs> victimized by your working situation, specifically by a leader. You know, it's fun. Like, what's funny about the mess? <laughs> what's funny about the message is like, I think it's a real, it's a great. It's a great question. It wasn't really a question, but we're going to answer it like it is. But mm-hmm. it's a great question because um, I think a lot of times if people don't like their boss, they think, well, then I just have to leave. Well, yeah. But I think what's interesting about this is like, is there an al- I Again, this isn't a question, but what I'm hearing this person ask is, is there an alternative? Like, is there something else I can do besides leaving? And I think. I mean, there absolutely is. And it actually takes a really <laughs> strong person to admit that, to admit that and then, and then want to learn it. Or it's the alternative. I think there's um, a lot of grace to be given in leadership and, a, and, and ownership of a business. And I think anyone that who has not done that or has not experienced that has a hard time giving empathy because obviously they've never experienced it, right? Or, or sympathy. And it was so cool. Like we just came back from premiere, hence why I'm like snacking on fruit because I'm pretending I'm still at the pool. I and and we met someone um, who was incredible, and I'm not going to name them, but they might know who they are, uh, just because I didn't ask their permission yet. <laughs> um, but they showed up to our class, and they were a commission stylists. They are a commission stylist, and they were like, "I love my salon. I love my boss." And I've been trying to get my boss to listen to your podcast because I know what you're teaching is the future of commission salons. And it was so sweet to me because it was like, okay, my boss isn't necessarily giving me what I need, but I want to grow with them as they grow as a leader. And I thought that was so cool because they were just on this mission to be like, I need to bring this information to my boss because I know that they can handle that growth and transformation. And I I, I do wish there was more of that because what happens is it becomes less like a collaborative and then the stylists get upset because the leader isn't growing. And then they're like, fucking out of here. I, you know, it's the solution to working with someone that you don't like is not always just leaving. I mean, that is a lot of times. I mean, yeah, it depends on the nuance of, I don't like you. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because again, like this, this, this text message is coming from someone. And so, we're, the way we read it is like we're on this person's side automatically, but mm-hmm. I gotta be honest, the person that sent that message could be a nightmare. Uh, true. 
<laughs> and that's something that people miss too is that it takes two to tango. It, it's it's never. But it only takes one, one to do the macarena. <laughs> okay. Only one person I'm gonna is going to end the podcast right now. I'm going to make it so that is the last thing you say. I don't care if it's been four minutes. <laughs> it takes oh two to tango, God. but only one to Macarena. And I think... It's true. I don't know how that is pertinent to what we're talking about, but <laughs> when it comes to it, I think there is there has to be a level on... Ev- on forget about who's the owner and who's the stylist and who's the employee and who's the boss. Forget about all that. As humans, Mm -hmm. deciding to make an effort on proper communication is paramount to success. Because at least then, if I have a proactive conversation with the person I'm working with, or maybe it's not even my boss, maybe it's a client, or maybe it's a, a fellow colleague that I'm working next to, even if I take the time to be as proactive as I possibly can, to be empathetic, to use emotional intelligence, and to bring it all to the table, at least then, if that person doesn't participate with me in that proactivity, I can then say I did everything I could. And I can feel good about whatever decisions I make, whether it's to stay or to leave or to create new boundaries. Regardless of how the other party is going to perceive that or react to that. Yeah. And I, 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 I think that's why we don't like communicating because we just assume what the other person's going to do. Mm-hmm. And well, they're going to be mad at me if I ask for time off or if I say I want this product line, they're going to flip out. So I just need to leave or I just need to go somewhere. And then lack of communication, you know, on the other side too, the leader's left with what did I do wrong? You know, all of these things are running through their head um, when it could have been something so simple as a conversation. And I, I think that's like when we really talk about the big picture of like how to get along with each other, it really starts with communicating everything the good the bad the ugly and that's not happening i think i don't believe that i think there's this level of getting along means we like each other Uh, not in business no definitely of all places not in business but i really that stick like we have to let no i can respect you and appreciate you and not want to be your friend (laughs) Salons are notorious for like, we're a family, we're best friends, we all get along. And every salon owner loves to tell me how much their team is amazing. And I agree. I I believe teams can be amazing. But if they're amazing because you all get along, there's an expiration date because it's just impossible to get along forever. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you can't uh, learn how to work with each other forever. It is, in fact, the teams that realize, we're not best friends and we don't have to be those teams not only work better together, they all make money better because there's a level of I'm here to work and make money. I'm not really here to tap dance my way through all these different relationships and make sure that everyone likes me and everyone's happy with what I do. That is just not going to be how it works. Having a team that is friendly to each other and having people on the team that are friends. I don't know if you've noticed, but the people that are, friends are usually the ones that cause issues. I was just about to say that. It goes down together. I you know, I I remember seeing the best friends that go out all night drinking and then come into work, you know, like those kind of things or um one friend one is usually is not bringing growing. the other down. Yeah. Exactly. One friend is not growing and the other is and then there's this connection and there's this resentment and it becomes those things and listen, it, it, it's it's impossible to not become best friends or have work wives or work husbands. Like that's why we have this company is because that happened with David and myself, you know, like it, it happened and that's fine, but there has to be like the boundaries, the communications, the higher level thinking outside of like, okay, I'm here to make money and grow my career first. Always. Like, and that's not happening. But even the leaders do that too. They're like, I just want us to all get along. I don't want there to be drama, but then they're sacrificing themselves and then they're not making money. And then the team, you know, and then it's just this shit show of a spiral that we see happen every single day. Let's be clear about what getting along is. Mm -hmm. Getting along should mean that we all respect each other. Well, let's talk about what respect means. Let's go even (laughs) deeper. Let's keep breaking that down. None of what when people are like, I want my staff to get along, what they're unfortunately saying is, I wish everyone liked each other um, and respected each other. 
but not all those things belong in the same pile. So liking each other is a lovely concept that might not, you know, I don't like every single person. I, I said that I, un, I don't, I thought I dislike people, but I, I have different levels of relationships with people and I know what those are and I'm not trying to get them to be all the same. And I think there is a, a little bit of a addiction in the salon world of like, I want to work with people that I like. Well, that's that's another reason why everyone ends up in a suite because they're you realize I don't, I don't like, like anybody. I don't yeah. like sometimes I don't like anybody. But and the then reality it goes is, back. Then you're in a suite for too long, and then you're like, I miss people, and then you're like, people. Was I the problem? <laughs> <laughs> I need to get back in there. I mean, if you can show up to a team and respect people, liking everyone is not required. Yeah. Being nice to people and liking them are not the same thing, right? Like, I can be nice to people that I don't like. That's just normal human behavior. But we live in this world, especially right now, of like, well, I don't like them because they disagree with me, and so I can't work with them. Well, well that's not really a requirement to work with someone. Mm-mm. That And this is the problem, too. I mean, unless you are being, like, bullied, disrespected, like, you know, that's a whole different level. Just saying, like, I don't vibe with you, like... You wouldn't be my people outside of this work, but like you're doing hair, I'm doing hair, I'm focused on my career. You know, hey, can you pass me that? Can you get me this? Can you help me with right. this? Cool. Like it's a whole different relationship. This is why we teach emotional intelligence because our industry has a very hard time separating emotion from business. Right. And so we see this. It's like, I don't like you. So now I'm letting my emotions in to a level to affect my business. And that's right. where it gets dangerous because it's like, Again, unless it's taken it to a level of like disrespect, bullying, harm, right? That's a but whole different level. Those are different things. Yeah. Those are whole totally different things. Just saying like you wouldn't be my friend out of here, but like you're cool over there in your chair while I'm over here in my chair is different. But then if that person does anything to enhance that dislike that you have for the person, the next thing you know, it's like outburst emotional fighting and it's yep. like y'all we're at work we're at work like yep we're our only job is to be here to take care of our clients and do the job that we signed up to do that's I, it <laughs> i remember when we worked in brooklyn there was someone that didn't like me and shocker I, <laughs> and i remember um this person said to my face that they didn't like me. And I said, that's absolutely fine because I don't like you either. And then we got they along just fine. probably did not love that. Well, it took, them, it took them a moment to be like, oh, like, okay. And then, but then we got along and because we respected that we didn't really, like, we're not friends. But yeah, and we it don't was have like, to be. It, it was this funny communication of like, yeah, like neither of us like each other. Like that, that's okay. I can still work here. You can still work here. And I gotta be honest, it, it, takes the wind out of the sails of frustration because you're like nothing else really to talk about after that you know that's what i said Um, i'm like excuse me i'm gonna get by you can you give me a towel i mean like i don't understand why it has to be and it wasn't out of and we helped each other not out of like how do we become friends how do we work it was just like there was a mutual understanding that we didn't really like each other and that we're probably never gonna hang out we never did And I would probably say that out of all of those relationships, um, that was the easiest one for me because she didn't require any of my energy and I didn't require any of hers. And I think that when we go to, oh, I wasn't going to say her, uh, but I think that when (laughs) we go to, um, when we work in a salon, we, we confuse like, oh, I'm supposed to like them. They're supposed to like me. I'm supposed to make sure that they're having a good day. They're supposed to make sure I'm having a good day. We're all supposed to help each other. It's just... I think the clearer you can be, and I'm not saying go to work from be like, hey, I just want to let you know I don't like you. <laughs> but I think when there's that, like, we don't get along, instead of like, well, how do we become, how do we fix it? Shouldn't be, how do we become friends? How do we fix it becomes, I don't like you. How do I create a boundary and still respect you, uh, you know, every day that I'm, that and I'm And that can with be you. with your bosses too. I've had bosses that I respect to a high level, but like, part of me was just like, I don't like you as like yes. <laughs> I, I don't like you. Like yeah, I, you I don't want to be trapped on a cruise with you. But I a, enjoy working time. in your business and the way you run your business. And that's it. Like and I think 
it it cracks me up when people yeah. get so caught up in all this drama because I'm like, what are you there to work? You obviously might not, you're not making money. You cannot be making money if this amount of drama is what you're focusing on. Because right. now you are not focusing on your social media growth, your marketing, yeah. your clients, your money, your pricing. And so to me, it's just like, what are you going to work for? Is this social hour or do you want a career? Well, and I think that's is, gotten lost. For a lot of people, I think the salon is a lot of socializing for them. And I get and, it. We're there all the time. Yeah. And I and it's okay to be social, but if you are using the salon to fulfill a social need that your friends and your family and, and the outside world should be doing, you're going to eventually resent the business. Because you don't have a because, life outside of work. Because you, you don't have a life. And you're asking the business to do something that it should never have been doing for you in the first place. And I know people are listening. They're like, but I love going and hanging out with these people. And, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do all those things. What I'm saying is it's that a time can't, and a place. <laughs> yeah, that can't be, can't be your work life and your social life. That's unhealthy just for yourself. But we do that in our industry. We're like, oh, I love going to work because I get to hang out with all my friends. And that, that's scary. But I also talk to salon owners that will message me or they'll, um, yeah, I guess they'll message me or they'll call me and we'll talk and they're like, I think I'm going to fire so-and-so because I, I just don't think we're connecting. And I'm like, but are they doing their job? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are they, are their clients happy? Yes. Is everybody making money? Yes. Then why would we get rid of them? Because you don't think that they're their, your friend? And you can sometimes see that light bulb go off of like, oh, like, so they're actually probably my best employee. Yeah. Yeah. That's your, your best employee is most likely the employee that doesn't think that they're your friend. And now a word from our sponsors. Turn your passion for products into big profits with Genesis Private Label. Now is the time to launch your own line and take pride in the brand you've worked hard to make. Experience the prestige of formulas crafted in the same North American labs as top beauty brands. From vegan cruelty-free options to sustainable packaging, Genesis Private Label provides it all. Act now and enjoy free shipping on your sample kit. Fully refundable when you join within 30 days. Start making real profit by selling your own uniquely branded products. Visit genesisprivatelabel.com slash DTH and begin in your product making journey. We at Destroy the Hairdresser in a groundbreaking collaboration with health industry veterans are bringing our listeners health plans that cover every professional in the beauty industry. This includes individuals, teams, and families. We are currently in the process of insuring thousands of beauty professionals in all 50 states. Healthcare benefits are now open and guess what? There's no enrollment deadline. Sign up during any month of the year and gain health benefits quickly. Get your name on the list by visiting destroythehairdresser.com slash hairdresser healthcare.